Hi guys, Sajad Hussain again with a new video. In this video, I am going to design an isolated footing based on the data given here. This is example 22.1. It's from PCA31808. And I am using CSI SAFE 2016. So let us start. We will start a new model. In this model, first we will select the design code. We will select ACI 31808 because this example is based on ACI 31808. We will revise or we will review the preferences. This is okay. Minimum cover, we know that the foundation slab will have a minimum cover of 3 inch. 3 inch. This is okay. So fine. In this example, as it is shown that this foundation is at a depth of 5 feet. There are loads, vertical loads and surcharge. The values are given over here. The weight of soil above the concrete is also given. Allowable bearing pressure is given. The column dimension is given. Based on this data, the area of this foundation is calculated as 13 by 13. So we will use this information and we will model a 13 by 13 uh, square foundation uh, footing slab. Let us start with the grids only. We will define two grids in X, two in Y, the spacing is 13 feet by 13 feet. Okay, so here is the, 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 the edges of boundary of the slab. Let us define our material first. 4000 PSI standard material and for steel a615 grade 60 steel is there. Let us define this lab. New property. We should say this as foundation or footing slab rather. That's a good idea. Footing slab. Its thickness is calculated somewhere here as 33 inch. 33 inch slab is thickness of slab is considered so we will consider the same thing over here then a column is defined that column is 12 by 30 so let us define the column. Let's name as column. This is 30 inch by 12 inch. Okay. Let us define the soil subgrade properties. Modify the properties. Here instead of bearing capacity, the value of modulus of subgrade reaction in compression only is given. Now let's evaluate the modulus of subgrade reaction. This is from bowels. In bowels it is given that the modulus of subgrade reaction Ks is equal to 12 times factor of safety multiplied by the allowable bearing capacity and this is in kip per feet. So. In our example, the allowable soil pressure at the bottom of the footing is 4.5 kip per square feet. So 12 multiplied by a factor of safety say 3 multiplied by 4.5. So this is 162 kip per cubic feet multiplied by 1000. So this comes out to be 1.62 into 10 raised to power 5. So let us modify. We can leave that as but let's modify. 1.620. 
into 10 raised to power 5 pound per cubic feet. This is our soil. There is only one soil. No need to put a one. Okay. Okay. Now we have the loads. We will load we will define first the geometry and then we will go back to loads. Let us define the slab. Our slab is footing slab and you can see the dimensions 13 feet by 13 feet. So the slab is defined very easy. Now we will define the column. Type of object is a column. Property below is column. No, there is nothing below property above this is column height below no nothing height above let's say it's 5 feet no offset angle is okay fine so let us assign this column this is the midpoint so column is assigned fine if you see in 3d it will look like this Let's put the axis and grid off. Now here you can see that our support condition is defined here. We will delete this support condition. Nothing. Right. So this support condition is gone. Now we have the dead load and live load. In addition, we have the superimposed dead load and there is a surcharge. So let us define the load. First we will define the load pattern. This load pattern, let us call it superimposed dead load. Let the type be super dead. Oh, sorry. The more one more is surcharge. Let us define one more. This is surcharge. Let let us define this as super dead surcharge. Okay. Let us assign the loads. We know that uh, the dead load, that service dead load or superimposed dead load as we call it, is 350 kip. So let us define 350 kip and add to the, let's replace this existing, there is no existing, there is no change, whatever. So let us assign this load over here. So this is the first load we defined which is superimposed dead load as defined over here. Let us select the point same. Assign load point load. This time we are going to assign the live load. Live load is 275 kip. So this is 275 kip. The surcharge is defined on the, the on the slab plus one more thing. It said that the average weight of soil and concrete above footing is 130 pound per cubic feet. And if we see this figure, total depth is 5 feet. That means this is 60, 60 inch. Our slab thickness is 33, so the remaining depth is 27 inch. Let's divide by 12, so it comes out to be 2.25 feet multiplied by 130 pound per cubic feet, so this gives 292.5 pound per square feet here on the surface of the slab. Plus there is a surcharge of 100 pound per square feet. So let's add this also. So if we add, it comes out to be 
392.5 pound per square feet let us select the the slab and let us assign load this is surcharge and this comes out to be this should be 392.5 pound per square feet okay so here is the load defined. Now we can define the load combinations. Add default design combination. So we have to add strength ultimate for the design of concrete. Service for the size of the footing. No need to define this. Okay. Now let's have a look. This is only dead load. The second condition is dead and live, all skill factor is 1. So basically we are interested in this load combination. For design, this is 1.4 D, all the dead load is multiplied by a factor of 1.4. And the second one is 1.2 multiplied by 1.6 live. So 1.2 D plus 1.6 live. So for concrete design we are interested in this load combination that is uh, UD con U2 and for the sizing we are interested in this one UD con N2 okay now we have to assign the soil property let us select the, the slab Assign support data, soil properties, we have this, okay. So now the support conditions are defined. Let us save the file, 22.1, okay. let me save this file. Let us run analysis and design, so this is the condition. Let's see, deformed shape for load combination, the second load combination, okay. So here the deflection is only 0.35 of an inch, that's okay, this is within the limits. Now let us display the pressure. The soil pressure, again this is the load combination and we are interested in soil pressure, okay. So the maximum pressure is 4.7 here and minimum is 4.3 so on the average it will be 4.5 so that's safe, no problem. Now we can see the, the slab design, stripe based, show bottom bars, we are interested. Okay, we have not defined the strips. So let us go back and define the strip. Draw the design strip. Design strip A, this is the column strip. So this is our design strip A. For B, let us define the design strip B over here. 
okay let us save so one more time let's see the design com combinations are okay fine let us run once more okay let's see the slab design both the directions let's see the number of bars 33 inch thick so let's take number 8 number 8 so here we can see that maximum at bottom is 13 number 8 bars so both the direction they have 13 number 8 bars let's see in this example only area is calculated so we are conf comfortable with the area so sorry in this first example area was calculated the area calculated is 13 by 13 we model our slab as 13 by 13 no problem no issues then in second part reinforcement is calculated over here so the reinforcement comes out to be 13 number 8 bars each way and our result also shows 13 number 8 bars So you can see here bottom bar number 13, 13 number 8 bars here and 13 number 8 bars here. So that means CSI safe give us a very very accurate result in foundation design. We can rely on this and we can use CSI safe for our design of the foundations. Thank you very much. Maybe in next example or in another example I will show you how to export the, the, the support reactions from um, uh, SAP 2000 and ETAPS to design the foundations over here. For the time being, thank you very much. Please do not forget to subscribe my channel. Thanks a lot. Bye.